Making a life worth living in retirement with having is really about the people in our lives. It's about how we do things. It's about how we say things. It's about how we make amends. It's about how we uh, produce trends. And in truth, we don't know what we're going to do until we get out there and do it. It's not really the same. When I say make a plan and work a plan, I'm talking usually about marketing, and I'm trying to help someone to see that if they're marketing themselves, they have to really understand what they look like doesn't matter. What they say matters the most. Because people will remember what you said. They're not going to remember what you look like or what you dressed in and what your fashion was in that moment, unless you're like me who has a visual memory for certain things. I can literally remember every moment of time with the gal that I love is pretty true. I can sort of vaguely remember what she was wearing in each of those moments, and openly, I remember how I felt. But with other people, I don't remember what they wore. I don't remember how they dressed. I don't remember what their hair looked like. I don't even remember if they had big hair, little hair, or literally no hair. But that's the truth. That's how we produce our lives. In life, we have moments of time to listen. We have moments of time to shut our eyes and literally hear someone say, hey, I'm needing some help. What can you do to help me? When it comes to dealing with homelessness, we have to look at the various T's of which we can help someone. There is our time that we can lend in terms of giving them some help in terms of listening to their story and understanding the reality and the truthfulness of it. We also have the opportunity to give them some talent, meaning we can either teach them a new skill set that would help them to get employed, or we can literally turn around, find out what their true skills are, and help them to find employment with those particular talents that they have so that they can quickly get themselves to a point of being able to provide themselves, hopefully, their own shelter, but at the very least, some food for the day. We also have the ability to give treasure, and what I mean by that is treasure is usually some sort of financial resource. Now, there are some people who are afraid to give a homeless person money, and that's sort of foolishness because every adult has to learn to manage their own finances. So if you give someone 5 bucks, they're most likely going to produce for themselves a 3 to $5 meal. If you give someone $10, they might produce for themselves something healthier to eat. If you give someone a gift card, it allows them the rights and freedom to go make that purchase, but it also allows them to track precisely, if it's a good company, how much money is left on the card so they know how much they have to spend. It's also a very easy thing for a homeless person to carry because if you're truly homeless, you have no home, which means you don't have the ability to carry a whole bunch of canned goods home and put them in the, in the cupboard and utilize them for the next week or month or whatever. Most homeless people are worried about how do I produce a meal for today? How do I produce a meal for this morning? How do I produce a meal for lunch or for dinner? Another way to help them with resources is to simply say, hey, would you like to go grab a bite to eat and we can talk and I can get to know you as a human being and I can make a new connection and you can make a new connection so that you don't feel so alone in life. Then, of course, we have other T's that we can address. There is the concept of team and that we need a team in order to move on in life is true. At the same time, we have the ability to look at technology. Technology is something that most people need to utilize in order to get employment. We either have the ability to do that if we have our own computer, and if we don't, maybe we've got an old laptop in a closet somewhere that could be refurbished and set up for a homeless person. Or maybe we've got a couple hundred dollars that we could go to an actual uh, box store and pick up an inexpensive computer that would allow them to create online profiles and do videos and do things they need in order to promote themselves. Truly, a person who has any type of business capability is going to need about a $500 computer is pretty true, especially if they've got their own software to install that's on a CD or if they need to use thumb drives more than just one at a time where they can move things back and forth. The $200 computer is not really going to quite cut it. And certainly an iPad or a ThinkPad or a touchpad isn't necessarily going to provide someone the opportunity to type any sort of letter with any real ease unless you provide for them a portable keyboard that's Bluetooth wired. And that sort of presents all sorts of other problems that someone with a Bluetooth capability could get onto your device. On top of that, we have the option to do produce telecommunications. Everything in the world is based on talking to someone by phone. I literally had to borrow a phone last evening, but in doing so, within 15, 20 minutes of talk, I was able to produce for myself a hotel stay, which has been lovely with a great hotel chain. Now, I don't like the people there, but that's pretty standard in hotels. They don't always have quality people, and that's the sadness about it that people don't recognize their rights in people's lives. The reason it wasn't good is because every time I tried to produce something for the people who paid for me, they kept turning off the business computer that I was working on. That was a fr great frustration. I would lose my work. We also have the opportunity to provide someone transportation. And what I mean by that is a couple different things. You could offer to drive someone somewhere, and that is somewhat of a little bit of a physical risk because you're getting into a car with a total stranger, but you're also in control because you're driving the car. At the same time, you could possibly help them to get their hands on a used or new bicycle for about 100 bucks or less, especially if you buy it from a second stand store. But the goal is to make sure that the tires are really uh, uncorruptible and indestructible. You could also produce for someone a bus pass if they lived in a 
uh, city setting where there's lots of buses to travel on. You could produce for them what I've just seen recently, which is an Uber gift card, which is great because then the individual can utilize a phone, public or private, to make a phone call to get a ride specifically to where they need to go. What a great idea that is. At the same time, there's other ways to give your uh, particular transportation and that maybe a couple of you can put together enough money to buy the person a moped or to contribute to a scooter or to get one second hand from some sort of a garage sale that it's coming in the spring. Or perhaps there's enough of you in the business world that are willing to actually help to produce for someone an inexpensive used car. Cars are not a, that expensive, but you might have to take someone with you who knows what's really a good quality vehicle that will last that person a while because if a homeless person has a car to sleep in, at least they're off the ground. At least they have a way to keep the bugs off them. They also have a way to stay safe for the most part. They can protect their property. They can literally go shopping when they get money, and it's sort of a great gift. But how much time do you really give to these people is really up to you and your own prayers to God. Now in life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. I'm literally fighting to keep my eyes open. It doesn't make sense, but that often happens when I'm using technology because someone may have monkeyed with my mind and programmed me that when I'm making progress to not be able to make that progress anymore. You see, we have monsters in the land that come in from foreign countries that play all these sort of pranks, and it's not funny, it's not enjoyable, and it literally ruins lives. In this moment of time, I'm asking for help getting a job. I'm also asking for help in finding a place to stay for a month or so so that I can at least get more of my life together and not have to run every single place every single day looking for something new. If it had a great breakfast buffet, that would at least allow me to eat for the morning, and then I could go out, produce some results to produce for myself a can or two for lunch and for dinner. You see, in life, when we're talking about things, we're talking about the T's of transformation. The T's of transformation say that I need to do other things in order to produce a new life. And that's the truth. Now, in life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. And if someone's been literally trying to get a hold of you and you keep saying, talk to the hand, I can guarantee you are not on God's path. If you are always saying, talk to the hand, I'm not talking to you, you are not listening to God at all in your life. And it's probably why your life is not going particularly well. It could be going well financially, but it may not be going well spiritually. It may not be going well emotionally. It may not be going well relationally. Money does make the world go round, but you can't sleep with money. You can't snuggle with it, although I suppose you could, but it's not what I mean. What I mean is that life is about the relationships we have, the loves in our life, and the people that love us no matter who we are, what we say, and what we do. In life, we have a moment of time to make a difference for someone's life. What are you doing today to help someone move forward in life? Thanks for listening.